undertaking our teachings on the book of Revelation uh, is so interesting. Like we said, that the book of Revelation uh, is the consummation of all the scripture. And we said that it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. But it is so unfortunate that 90% of believers run away from the book of Revelation. They are not finding it interesting. Now, if it is a revelation of Jesus Christ, it means it's a letter to us also. It's for us also. It, 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 it is profitable to us. It's a part of the scripture that was given by the inspiration of God. And it's also profitable for doctrine, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So we find it interesting. You see, so, so many people who are not interested in Christ, they are not interested in the revelation of Christ. They are only interested in what to eat, what to wear. And I want you to understand one of the things that have uh, deformed, you know, Christianity is always thinking what to eat, what God will do for me, what will happen to me, the sign that will happen to me. It's all about you, 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 you. And no emphasis on the kingdom of God. When we're talking about the kingdom of God, he is not interested. He's only interested in what God will do for me. Prophecy for, for my life. Prophesy for me. Prophesy for my future. Prophesy for my job. Prophesy for my children. These are the things that have brought heavy corruption, selfishness in Christendom. Nobody is after, you know, since the Lord began to unveil some of the things to me, my interest is not much on what God will do for you. My interest is for you to realize the kingdom of God and come into the kingdom of God and grow into the fullness of the life and come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ and come to become the heavenly Jerusalem and come to become the city of God and become eternal dwelling place of God. And these are the things that the book of Revelation is opening to us. The book of Revelation is the revelation of Christ that are the, 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 the building block that are to be built, the saint, to be built up in the measure of the stature of fullness of Christ. Now because the building block for building the body of Christ is the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's why you can't function well in the fivefold ministry until you understand the revelation of Jesus. Because as a minister, revelation of Christ is your tool. Revelation of Jesus is your tool. He, in Ephesians chapter 4, 11, he gave some to me, uh, apostle and some prophet and some evangelist and some pastors and teacher for the equipping of the saint, equipping the saint with the knowledge of his will. The greatest asset as a believer is the knowledge of God's will. So the saint are to be equipped. You have not done any saint well if you have not equipped him with the knowledge of his will. Sometimes we should stop, stop, stop thinking about all our all that the church member need is money. All that the church member need is a, is a, is visa, is good house, and we are not instructing them on how to stay on the revelation of Jesus Christ for a personal build up. Like Apostle Paul said in Acts of Apostle chapter twenty verse thirty two, I commend you to the word of God, to the word of His grace, which is able to build you, establish you. And give you inheritance among them that are sanctified. We should look into the word of God in this dimension. It is not all about what we eat, what we wear, the car that God will give you, the job that God will give you. All those things are good. There are places for those things, but they are not the thing to seek after. Because when you see the kingdom of God, his righteousness, those things will be added unto you without struggle, without sweat, they will come. Every necessary thing that you needed for fulfillment of life and destiny and pressing into God, God will make them available for you. So he said to equip the same and for the work of the ministry. Now the work of the ministry is the building. That's why for the edi edification or edifying the body of Christ. So you build the body of Christ till the body come to the 
knowledge, to the unity of the faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, then to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So the book of Revelation is vital. It's necessary. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have gone through uh, chapter 1, and we have seen in, in chapter 1 that it is a revelation of Jesus Christ that was put in sign or that was put in symbol meant for a careful and a diligent seeker of God to understand. Now those symbols and those signs we are already in the scripture. When we go to the law and the prophet, we will find out the symbols that they used to see the book of Revelation. So when we don't understand what those symbols is all about, like uh, you go to Revelation chapter 5, you see uh, 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 the present lava. You go to Revelation chapter 16, you know, 15, 16, you see, sorry, in, in Revelation chapter 5, you see the, the golden, golden altar. In Revelation chapter 5, you see the golden altar. You also see uh, uh, the golden, golden altar. You, you, you also see in Revelation chapter 15, 16, the blessing lava, which is uh, the blessing lava, which was called the sea glass. The sea glass, it was called in Revelation 15 and 16 because in the temple of Solomon, it was known as the sea glass. You see it there. You come to Revelation chapter 1, when John turned to see the voice, he saw one standing like a son of man, clothed with the garment of the high priest. So I need to understand the garment of the high priest to so understand that. He was in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Where do we see the seven the golden candlestick? The golden candlestick is seen in the tabernacle of Moses. You also read Revelation chapter 8 and chapter 9. What you see there? You see the, uh, the golden altar there. You see the golden altar. Then in Revelation chapter 3, you're already seeing, um, you, know, you know, the table of the shoe bread as symbolized by the tree of life. Those 12 loaves that are represented by the 12 fruit. And when the seven angels sounded, when the seven angels sounded in uh, the book of Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, when it sounded, the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of this world. So we mean the essence of the seed had been fulfilled. Then we see the effect in verse 19. And the temple of God was opened. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. And we see the ark of God. So we find out that all the articles in the book of, you know, you know, in tabernacle, we are used to write the book of Revelation. So until I understand what all this means, what they symbolize, if I understand that when the third seal was open, he said, touch not the wheat, touch not the barley. If I understand that the wheat and the barley, the, 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 the barley is the harvest of Passover, the wheat is the harvest of the Pentecost, and then the fruit we saw in Revelation chapter 22 is the, is the harvest of the feast of the tabernacle. So understanding the feast will also enable me to uncall, to unveil the symbol and then take the word of God, apply it to myself, and understand what God is saying. Now, because understanding is the key. When you don't have understanding, the word cannot be fruitful. Do you remember the parable of the sower? You find that in the four categories of the seed that was sown, one fell on a good soil, sorry, one fell on the wayside, one fell on the stony side, the other one fell on the tony side, one fell on a good ground. On a good ground. The one that fell on a good ground, he said was a person that had, you know, had the word, he had understanding. And he began to produce fruit unto starting 1600 fold. So when we don't understand the word of the Lord, we can produce fruit. That's why the other three calibers of, 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 of soil could not produce fruit. Because no understanding. It was so, the, the, the seed fell on the wayside. The base of the earth devoid, no understanding. He heard the word. He doesn't know what it means. The enemy takes it away. He had a word, the one that fell on a, a rocky ground. The moment he had a word, he received it with joy, with excitement. Having received it with such, such joy and such excitement, when tribulation, persecution 
come for the word's sake. He takes it away. It devoid. And the one that fell on a thorny place, he received the word. When, you know, the cares of this world and the sinfulness of sin, he chopped the word. The word withered. But here, the man, the good clan, he had understanding. So understanding is the key. To understand the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's why Paul prayed pray in a, uh, Ephesians 1, 17 from 15. Since I heard of your faith, I cease not to pray for you. That God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. In the knowledge, the eyes of your understanding, be enlightened that you may know. What is the hope of this calling? What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance? That they, 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 what the exceeding greatness of his power towards you. To the Colossian church, I desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and understanding. So we need to understand the scripture to interpret and come into understanding. Now, because of the lack of this understanding, we see certain things in the scripture, we don't know what it means. We see at the last trumpet, we don't understand the message of the trumpet. In Numbers chapter 7, sorry, Numbers chapter 10, when God told Moses to make a trumpet for the calling of the people, for the movement of the camp. But Paul understood. Paul had something in mind when he was talking about at the last trumpet. So Paul must have known the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh trumpet. And he mentioned at the seventh trumpet we shall be changed. Now because the message of the seventh trumpet is a message of change. A message of immortality, a message of you know, you know, you know, you know, transmogrification and coming into the glory, you know, the glorified body by the work of redemption. Not because we don't understand the progressive work of revelation and the word of God. We are stumbling, no understanding. We can interpret what John was saying, the things that John saw. It's very key that we understand that. So we have gone through Revelation chapter one, and what it means that. When John heard a voice, you know, you know, he turned to see the voice. And uh, turning turn, he saw the man standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, which are the seven churches of Asia. And he said, write this unto the church of Ephesus, right unto the church of Smyrna, right unto the church of Pagamos, to the church of Tyatera, uh, to the church of Sardis, to the church of Philadelphia, and the church of Laodicea. And these seven churches are here with us, as we have said. Praise God. So, uh, we go to the uh, Revelation chapter 2. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. We are going to take these churches one-on-one. -on -one. You can get back to check on our YouTube on uh, 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 Introduction to the Book of Revelation, then the Book of Revelation 1, the Book of Revelation 2, then you follow us in series. Now, on to the angel of the church in Ephesus, uh, you know, you know, you know, write these things. Uh, said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. This how actually he revealed himself in Revelation chapter 1. He's holding the seven light, the seven light that bear the seven revelation of the of the of the seven sea, the seven light. You know, you know, of the of the sea, the the the, 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 the servants of God, they are the stars in his right hand, and the seven candlestick in his church. In other words, I'm sending forth ministers of light to bring forth the revelation of Christ upon the church. I am the one sending them with the message of light. Okay, praise God. I know thy work and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst bear them which are evil. And how that have tried and we say the apostle and have not and found themselves as a liar. Thou hast born and have patient and for my name's sake has, has labored and have not uh, fainted. You have labored. Now this efficient church, we know the strength of that efficient church. That was a church, you know, in, in a Paul talked to in Acts of Apostle chapter 20. You know, you know, it was a strong and a vibrant church. That Paul wrote about the revelation, we saw their zeal, we saw their knowledge, and Christ was commending them here of you know, you know, you know, how they have patience for his name's sake, how they have labored and have not fainted. But he said, Have something uh, against them because they have left their first love. 
Hallelujah. Like we said, like we said, like, 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 like you said, we also have churches that have left their first love. We have, have, we have such church with us that left their first love. So it's also addressing to those in our days that have left for their first love. Remember from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do thy first work, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick <coughs> out of his place, except thou repented. Yea, but this thou hast, that thou, thou hatest the deed of the Nicolaitan, which I also hate. You hated the deed of Nicolaitan. Now, now the deed of Nicolaitan, where the doctrines are formulated by Nicholas. Nicholas was one of, of those seven deacons. And after a while, he began to teach on the supremacy of the clergy over the laity. And not forget that the Bible has already laid a foundation that we should not lift ourselves above our brethren. And they began to teach this thing, the supremacy. So God was writing them to turn back. In Ephesians church, you know, you know, you know, praise God, he acknowledged them that, that they, 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 they have all those things, but this thou hast, that thou hated the deed of the clay which I hate. He that hath ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches, to him that overcometh. I will give to it the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. You will eat of the tree, and the tree of life is responsible for immortality. The tree of life is responsible.